Sorry to keep you waiting, friend. Old Derek just had a job to do is all, and chatting with you don't pay the bills, fun as it is. It was a simple job in a forest. Had to put down a rabid bear, nothing dangerous. The forest is a nice place, eh? It's got lots of nice plants, and the animals don't seem too harsh compared to other places. It ain't too hot, it ain't too cold. Seems a perfectly nice bit of nature. But that's because you're not looking hard enough. Sure, the forest is a nice place, but nice places attract all kinds of things. You may run into animals that have grown to be twice their normal size. You might fall victim to the tricks of the Fey folk. And if you're really unlucky, you'll wander into the realm of a green dragon. Green dragons make their homes in forests. That's why most folk call them forest dragons. They prefer the more temperate areas. But any place that could be considered a forest is good enough for them. A forest is pretty small when you compare it to the icy tundra or a desert. So finding a green dragon should be easy, right? And no such luck, I'm afraid. You see, green dragons are the cleverest of all their kind. They know all the best places to hide. They know how to use the forest to their advantage. If you don't know how to make way in the forest, you could easily get lost in a sea of trees. This goes double for the territory of a forest dragon. The forest seems to come alive and do everything in its power to hide the dragon from you. Good luck finding tracks. Yeah, see, but there's the rub. You don't need to find tracks. When the forest becomes even more vibrant, more alive, more energetic, but at the same time, more oppressive, more hostile. That's when you know you're in green dragon territory. Keep a sharp eye. These dragons love to toy with their prey. They'll watch you, hidden by the forest itself. The plants will ensnare you and slow you down, and the animals will become as spies following you for days and telling the dragon everything they see. It'll be watching and waiting. They won't reveal themselves till they're good and ready. Usually not until some other forest beast has taken a chunk out of you. Puts you at a disadvantage, which is what they want. They want to scare you. They want to scare you so bad, you'll do anything to get out of the woods alive. Don't fall for it, friend. Keep a grip. But... You could put on a performance. As a trick old Derek learned a few years back, green dragons love revealing themselves to prey when their prey is terrified. So put on that act. Cry, scream, beg for a way out, anything to lure the beast out. Make it convincing. These green dragons are mighty hard to fool. Are there any other ways of getting them to come out? Aye, there are. Both are right dangerous, though. The first way is to smoke it out. Set the forest on fire. Now there is a chance all you'll do is drive the dragon out. Then you've lost it for good. Not to mention you'll piss off all the other things living in the forest. Dryads, treants, druid circles. It ain't really the best plan. The only other way to lure out a green dragon is to bring their most hated enemy into their territory. Hill Giants. Aye, Hill Giants. See, those fat bastards love to eat eggs of the green dragon. So the dragon, in turn, despises them. Kinda heartwarming, isn't it? Seeing how good of a parent a green dragon is. Anyway, they'll come a-running right towards the giant. And while the two are laying into one another, you stay low and worry about the victor. There's risks to this. A hill giant may seem like a good ally, they's dumb as rocks, and they're just as likely to eat you as they are to help you. Let's say you lure the dragon out of hiding. Get a good look at it. Their leaf green scales, their long serpent-like bodies, the frill running down the back of their neck, and most important, their small wings. See, all dragons can fly, but why fly when you live in a thick forest? Even if you got them on the ropes, the dragon usually won't fly away. Of course, fighting a green dragon ain't as simple as fighting a white one. The forest dragons love to talk. 
and scheme. More likely, they'll try to deal with you, offer you a way out of the forest in exchange for a favor. Do not take this offer. It's a lie. Lion is second nature to him. It's like breathing. Every offer a green dragon makes is just a trick to get you to let your guard down or lure you into a trap. Then you're easy pickings. At best, you'll be a quick meal. At worst, you'll be a slave. Oh, ho, ho. green dragons love having slaves and workers for them. They love toying with them, too. Constantly tricking them. Lost a good friend of mine to one of their tricks. She was a lovely elf, an aspiring wizard. She fell victim to the dragon's dealings. I can't blame her. The forest dragon's words are smooth as silk and sweet as honey. Anything they say sounds like a good idea. They have this charm about them. Makes you let your guard down. I should have seen it coming. Green dragons love the taste of elf more than anything else. Your friend has found you after all this time. How delightful. I can tell just by looking at him, he is no fool for a human. But you, dear girl, are mine. And I do not part with what is mine so easily. However, I am in need of some entertainment. I will offer you the same bargain I give to all my things that wish to leave. If you can find a large emerald in my hoard, you may leave. I hid it well, so do try your best. She found it, all right. Sharp eyes, those elves have. But the gem was cursed. She became paralyzed the moment she touched it. The green dragon then gobbled her up in an instant. I saw the whole thing. Of course, I got mine. Gutted that filthy green bastard. Still, too little too late. Remember, friend, green dragons are as wicked as they come. Never trust a word they say. And never look into their eyes. Green dragons love to use charming magics, and their eyes hypnotize their victims into a stupor. Be prepared to guard your mind against such trickery. A green dragon might be smart, but they have all that draconic pride and greed. You can get them to slip up in a number of ways. The first is to convince the beast that a second green dragon is in its territory. Remember how I said forests are small? Well, there ain't enough forest to go around, and green dragons are fiercely territorial. It'll lose all interest in you in favor of hunting down the intruder. Be careful with this idea, friend. Forest dragons may hate one another, but they love their babies. If you got balls of iron, you can threaten their eggs or their wormlings, but this will lead to a fight. And green dragons, they hate fighting. They think it's beneath them, but that don't mean they're weak. Their long necks can stretch and move about like a snake into seemingly small hiding places. Their fangs drip with a venom that can kill a dozen men easy. And their breath weapon is a cloud of noxious poisonous gas. One breath and your eyes will water, your lungs will bubble, and your skin will feel like it's burning. Take some potions that cure poison and bring protection against it. Don't be afraid to push hard into the fight. Green dragon scales aren't as tough as other dragons, so your blades will have an easier time getting through them, especially piercing weapons. Large spears and arrows work wonders if you hit the dragon at its soft underbelly. Do what you can to cut off the dragon's escape. They'll make a run for it if the fight ain't going their way. The dragon's lair is usually in plain sight. They like to find the biggest tree in the forest and dig a burrow underneath its roots, or hollow out the inside like a giant nest. The tree becomes an extension of the green dragon's body. Gnarled roots will spring out and strangle and lash at you. Thick fog will cover the battlefield, blinding you. Use wind magic to clear a path, or bring a druid to calm the plant life. And watch out for ambushes. 
The green dragon will always make its way to its treasure hoard to make its last stand. It'll be behind an illusion. Look for plants that sparkle. Aye, you heard me right. Sparkle. Green dragons love gems that reflect their forest homes. Emeralds and rubies or polished amber. They thread these gems into their lairs as a decoration, and always near their hoard room. The beast may try to bargain for its life, offer you up its treasure if you spare it. Do not spare it. If you do, all you're doing is letting the dragon plot its revenge, and these buggers will want revenge. If all else fails, use fire. The dragon will panic and try to get its precious treasure out of its lair before the tree burns down. That's all the advice I can give you. Now get out of here, you. Take a lovely stroll through the woods. Just remember, the woods are always watching. Always. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please like, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment down below about why you love green dragons. Check out my Patreon if you want early access to all videos and more. I am having so much fun making these and giving them out to you guys, and I couldn't do it without all of you. So thank you, and look forward to even more D&D and fantasy content in the future.